Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is February 26, 2020, and this is your KSO Today. For this Wednesday, following another K-State basketball defeat, unfortunately, which we'll talk about quite a bit, as well as what to look forward to upcoming on the site here on KSO Today. As always, this show is brought to you by our sponsors, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. PSV, as I tell you quite often, has 10 branch locations and 17 ATMs within the state of Kansas. Two of those branches and six of the ATMs are just here in Manhattan. Legacy Insurance also has a location here in Manhattan. While I'm talking about sponsors, we will be at Tallgrass Tap House tomorrow night again, 7 o'clock on Thursday, Ford edition of the KSO Show, a full-length one with myself, Grant Flanders, and some others, I am sure. The first thing I'm about to talk about, of course, is the loss to Baylor last night in Waco. Uh, I don't want to be overly dramatic and, and throw out the term rock bottom just uh, haphazardly, but it kind, of, it kind of felt that way, to be honest with you. And, and K-State has been trending this way for, for quite some time now. Of course, some things went against the Wildcats last night. If you want to be, you know, kind or fair to them, uh, the foul trouble was was kind of ridiculous from right off the top, and uh, I don't I agree with a whole lot of it. Of course, no Montavious Murphy. There's and Baylor's really really good. That's the number two ranked team in the country who just had a 23 game winning streak snapped. Was really upset playing at home, and they played really really well. All those things said, uh, I thought K State's performance last night was pretty rough. The Wildcats again got down big early. They got down 11-2 before Bruce Weber called a timeout to talk about it. And I mean, they never, they never got back in it. And this is something I've been writing about a little bit now in the finals and on the message board and et cetera is, is K-State losses are losses, right? But for a while, for better or worse, K-State was having these games where they dig these big holes, but almost a hundred percent of the time they would come all the way back, either to get within one, take the lead. They weren't winning. So again, it wasn't good enough, but you could kind of count on them getting back in these games and playing hard throughout. That's really slowed down. And I'm not saying they didn't play hard last night. In fact, I think they did. I think there's a lot of evidence of it if you watch the game. But the fact is they weren't competitive. And and that's been kind of a trend. You know, the game Saturday against Texas, um, they did get down big early. They got it back to, I think, 26-20, you know, maybe a six-point margin. That's not even that close, of course, late in the first half. But then got blown out. I mean, that game got to 15-20 real fast. They never got in it. You look at that TCU game. Uh, before that that I was at down in Fort Worth and yes they did lead with like seven minutes left but they were down 13 just a few minutes after uh, the Oklahoma State game they didn't have a chance to win late the Iowa State game in Ames they didn't have a chance to win late so even while they were playing poorly and losing games I was giving them praise for being competitive and getting back in games and even that started to slip away so and then last night's game was probably not probably it was the worst we'd seen and again you do have to credit the, the opponent the quality of the opponent where the game was played etc but that's a 28 point game, you know, in the first half. Uh, and it got significantly worse than that. I don't know what the biggest lead got to. Don't even have it in front of me. 34 is the number that stands out in my head. I think K State closed on a 16 1 run. And, and hey, I'm not going to. I'm not going to dismiss that either. You know, if we're going to praise people, we want people to play hard throughout an entire game. You don't want K-State just to land on stop trying. So I'm not upset that they scored late um, to make it look closer than it was. I praise them for playing hard and trying to do that. But the fact of the matter is that was not a 19-point margin, um, at least that type of game. K-State really, really got handled at Baylor um, in a manner we haven't seen for a while. So I'd written a column a couple of days ago. Sharing my opinion, you know, on the basketball program and Bruce Weber, another loss, you know, another big loss to Baylor doesn't really impact or change any of that. But it is a dangerous finish of the year for K-State. I mean, because I said losses are losses, but if you go down, to be quite blunt about it, not even swinging, you know, down the stretch against the Baylors and Kansases and et cetera, it will leave a different feeling for some um, on how this season went, even though no matter how you slice it, it's going to be a disappointment for for everybody. Uh, we do have some upcoming trips to talk about. I know D.Y. mentioned a couple of them yesterday. We will be heading to really Boulder, I believe, is where we're going to be early next week um, to see both Ty Robinson. I think we're going to try to see him on Monday and then Braden Wood on Tuesday. It's a wide receiver, Ty Robinson, defensive lineman, Braden Wood. We're excited to see both those guys. And then I think D.Y. is already strongly hinted on this on the board, or I have or something, so I might as well just say it. We do have plans already in place this month to see two more commits for K-State. Much easier travel for us right around Kansas City. Um, and Devontae Pritchard and Dorian Stevens. So I have a couple of commits there we're going to see for K-State. So that's at least four, uh, two targets, two commits. We'll see this month, and we'll see what else happens. You know, we have some free time, of course. That's not that's not a passive shot at the basketball team. Um, I would love to be covering the NCAA tournament or, or that kind of stuff. But if we have, you know, some time that we're not spending uh, on these road trips like we haven't on basketball, we need to do something else with it instead of just pocketing the money. So we're happy to go see these kids and do it. And it's been a lot of fun for us, selfishly. We like doing it. Um, and I hope people enjoy seeing it, too, because it gives you a sense of these kids beyond what we've done, 
I think in the past, just with written updates and stuff, which will continue to happen, of course. Speaking of written updates, I know Derek's got one on the site this morning from tight end Gunnar Helm. Uh, tight end H-back, fullback, whatever it is, is such a big part of this offense. Those are always going to be fascinating positions to watch. And I believe, at least from what DY teaches me, I don't have any of my own intelligence in this kind of thing, uh, that Gunnar Helm is a very serious target. That's a good update from DY. I can tell you in the admin, you'll expect an update probably on wide receiver Jaden Jaden Bray, pardon me, from Derek tomorrow. Um, that's something to keep an eye out for. I also know Grant Flanders has put in pretty significant work. And I mean this sincerely. Again, nothing nothing subtweety about this into a, into a, a lengthy hoops recruiting notebook um, that I'll have edited and probably on the site Thursday. So I think at least on Thursday, if nothing else, I know you can look for a Jaden Bray update at Hoops Notebook, and I'm sure we'll have more than that too. Plus, like I said, tomorrow night, myself and Flanders will be doing the KSO show from Tallgrass Tap House. Anybody listening, we'd love to have people out for that. We'll see who we can add to it. We may take some questions this week for this. We haven't done that for quite a while. Um, I'm not totally sure yet. I hate to always default to the question and answer thing because it feels lazy to me, but I also like it because you guys ask good questions. You guys and gals ask good questions, and it provides a lot of good content for us. So I'll wait and see. I haven't totally thought that out just yet. But that'll be exciting, I think, for us to, to get back there and talk about that. Of course, this coming Saturday, K-State will play Kansas in Manhattan. We'll have full coverage of that. As the Wildcats, like I talked about, will look to avoid really, really ending the season with, with a thud, to be quite honest. If if they're able to play a competitive game or, or, gosh forbid, you know, beat Kansas, I think that would have probably a tremendous impact on some people. At least a win probably would. One win doesn't change your season. It's still disappointing. But I think people... When I say people, I should speak for myself. I would be encouraged, you know, to see a team continue to play hard and to find a way to hop up and compete and, you know, like I said, perhaps even beat your biggest rival. That's a lot to ask, though. Kansas is playing great. They're every bit as good as that Baylor team that K-State just got drilled by last night. Maybe they're playing better than Baylor right now, to be quite honest. So we'll have to see. I think it's going to be a really tough matchup for K-State, and I'll be interested to see how they respond mentally and physically to playing the Jayhawks. A relatively short episode today of KSO Today. All that's really changed since yesterday's was, of course, uh, K-State's lost to Baylor last night in Waco, and Derek did a fantastic job in yesterday's edition, so he didn't leave me a lot to do. I really, really appreciate him. But we will be back tomorrow, like I said, with a regular edition of the KSO Show from Tallgrass Tap House. then back one more time on Friday. For Flando Friday, his second run at it, he's going to be probably a thousand times better and do a fantastic job on his next KSO today. You'll hear from him then. You'll hear from me tomorrow night. Appreciate your time. If you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please hit that red button and do that for us. It's sincerely helpful. If you don't subscribe to K State Online, I guess that's okay, but I wish you would think about it and you could hear about some of these things that I'm just advertising on this show. Appreciate your time. Enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll talk to you soon.